guys, welcome back to the Health Conscious Dog Mom. We've been receiving a lot of feedback and a lot of questions based on our last Instagram stories and our last YouTube video where we discussed that dogs are in fact carnivores and that they need to be fed that way. So we thought that we would take this video to really take a step back and unravel why we believe that dogs are in fact carnivores. And then we will also be sharing one of our number one hacks if you must feed your dog carbohydrates. For point number one to prove that our dogs are in fact carnivores, we're going to talk about their teeth. Something very easy to look at, something very easy to visualize. I want you all to take a second to think about what a horse's teeth look like compared to what our dog's teeth look like. You can see that horses have a jaw that can actually move sideways and they also have the flat teeth in order to be able to grind down and really chew on carbohydrates such as grass and grain. If you gave a horse a piece of meat, they would have a really hard time trying to chew through that piece of meat. It would have to be ground up really, really well. Where if you were to look at a dog, and I'm sure many of you guys have given your dogs a carrot or something, and it's kind of funny because when you watch them eat that carrot, or another form of starch or carbohydrate, it's very awkward. They're kind of chewing awkwardly trying to get all the pieces and most of the time they're going to leave a mess on the ground that they're going to have to lick up later or you're going to end up having to clean up. And it's because dogs don't have that ability to really move their jaws side to side to really grind down carbohydrates and it's also because of their teeth. You know, their teeth are, as you can see, designed to rip through meat. They're not designed to grind up vegetables or carbohydrates. Now this doesn't mean that I think that carbohydrates, especially vegetables, should be completely absent from our dog's diet. I do believe that dogs definitely need vegetables. I think it's a great source of vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. However, there's a reason that the vegetables have to be ground up. Wolves in the wild were getting their plant life from the stomachs and undigested plant material of the animals that they were eating. Um, and that's how they're able to digest it. In fact, if you give your dog that carrot and then wait till later that day, you're going to be able to see that carrot on your lawn. Um, they won't be able to digest it because they can't digest cellulose, which is why when we're feeding raw, we have to grind up those vegetables for our dogs. They aren't just designed to be able to eat them and digest them. So thinking about their teeth and then thinking about how wolves were able to get their plant life is number one in our reasoning that dogs are in fact carnivores. Another thing to look at when we're discussing on whether or not dogs are carnivores is thinking about their digestive systems. Their digestive tract is much shorter and more acidic than ours. It's why they're able to eat animal droppings and not get sick from them. It's why they're able to digest that raw food quickly as well as have the acidity needed for no bacteria to really be able to survive. So this is another reason why raw is okay. And that was a big concern of mine before switching some into raw. And the more research I did, the more I learned that dogs are in fact designed to digest raw food. It's the only thing that makes sense on why they're able to eat gross animal droppings and not get sick from them or lick things and not get sick from them. Their digestive tracts are designed for bacteria to not be able to survive. The third topic that we're going to discuss on why we believe that our dogs are carnivores is discussing how they utilize what they eat. So when you feed your dog a commercial pet food that is high in carbohydrates or maybe you're adding carbohydrates into their fresh food, those carbohydrates eventually in their bodies have to get broken down to sugar or glucose to be able to utilize it. So no matter what source of carb that you're feeding them, it's getting broken down to sugar within their body. Okay, so when it gets broken down to sugar to be able to be utilized, what happens is blood sugar rises, insulin spikes, and then that blood sugar is going to get stored into the muscle and liver as glycogen for later use. And then all the excess is going to be stored as fat. And this is where we really start getting into weight gain issues is because that excess carbohydrate is going to be just stored as fat. Now, once that insulin has spiked, the glucose gets to be where it needs to go and all the blood levels return to normal. This is where we get that sugar crash. So really you can picture your dog utilizing carbohydrates as a source of energy as their day going through peaks and valleys. And it's peaks and valleys of energy. They're going to get highs and lows. And that's really not the ideal source of energy. Compared to when your dog is utilizing fat for energy, they're getting a constant balanced flow of energy all day long burning that fat source and we don't have to worry about fat being stored as fat. 
It's hard to think about sometimes, but fat does not make us fat or our dogs fat. Storing fat is what makes us fat. So when we're constantly utilizing that fat for energy, we're getting a steady source throughout the day, and that's exactly where we want our dogs to be. We want them to be in energy balance, not experiencing those peaks and valleys of sugar crashes. Okay, so we've made most of our points on why we believe that dogs are carnivores. So you may be thinking, okay, you're telling me that our dog is a carnivore. How are our dogs surviving on high carbohydrate pet food diets? How is that possible if our dogs are solely carnivores? Well, they are scavengers too. So for years and years and years, the wolves were following humans and scavenging their leftovers. And yes, over time, years and years and years, our dogs have evolved to be able to digest carbohydrates. But there's two really big points that we need to consider before saying that a high carbohydrate diet is ideal for our dogs. Number one, Surviving is not the same as thriving. So this obesity epidemic that we have within our canines, this cancer epidemic that we have, again, within our dogs, we have to ask ourselves why. We have to ask ourselves why by mid to late age, our dog's bodies start to break down, especially our larger dogs. Their hips are sore, maybe they're overweight, we have to be watching what we're feeding them. They may develop cancer, they may develop some other sort of condition, and they are most definitely not thriving. We have to ask ourselves why. And going back to how our dogs are utilizing carbohydrates for energy, constantly going through those peaks and valleys, that means that their blood sugar is constantly going through peaks and valleys, and their insulin is constantly going through peaks and valleys. And that constant insulin elevation leads to inflammation, weight gain, and potentially insulin resistance, which is where we're seeing diabetes in our dogs now as well. The second point to consider is that the dose makes the cure or the poison. So while I do believe that our dogs perform best with no sources of starches, meaning potatoes, rice, grains, things of that nature, I believe that they should just have their vegetables, fats, and animal protein. The dose is what makes it healthy or poison long term. So when we are feeding our dogs that high carbohydrate kibble, again, it's keeping that insulin spiked all the time. It's being stored as fat. Our dog's energy levels are going through peaks and valleys. We're increasing inflammation. And do you know what cells thrive the absolute best on sugar? Cancer cells. So when we really take it down and unravel the reasoning behind why we believe dogs are carnivores and the reason why we believe that dogs should be having a very, very minimal or no carbohydrate diet, again, other than vegetables, we have to consider the epidemic that is right in front of us and it's obesity and cancer in our dogs. And right here you just heard me explain how carbohydrates can be to blame for both of those epidemics. Now. I do have a hack if you must feed your dog carbohydrates. So for example, this could be you if maybe you can only afford to feed your dog raw once a day and you have to feed kibble the other half, or maybe you can't afford to get all of your dog's calories in from solely just animal protein and vegetables. So you do have to add a little bit of starch or maybe sweet potato or rice or something like that. This is our hack for you to use. Feed those starches or feed that dry commercial dog food in the evening. And that's what I do for Summit, and I'll tell you why here. Most of the time, Summit does not get any starches. He doesn't get sweet potatoes, he doesn't get rice, but sometimes if money's tight or I'm on a certain budget one month or maybe he is super, super active during the day, like more so than usual, and I know that he needs to have more calories, I will add in starches because it, it is more affordable. So our hack to getting around that is just giving that starch source at night. So that way all day long your dog is able to thrive utilizing fats for energy rather than carbohydrates going through those peaks and valleys. So if you know that you need to feed your dog kibble or a higher source of carbohydrates, don't do it in the morning. Feed them their meat in the morning, feed them their egg or their animal protein, whatever you're gonna be giving them in the morning. Let them go all day long utilizing that fat for energy, which is ideal for them, and then give them their starch at night. So now we're decreasing insulin spikes because we aren't giving our starches two times, like breakfast and dinner, and then they're also able to prevent going through those peaks and valleys of energy, which is really what we want, and then they can be in energy balance all day long, which is ideal for our dogs. So I hope 
hope that this video added some perspective for you guys because it can be confusing and it can be a completely different way of thinking from what we've been taught. It can be even a completely different way of thinking from what our veterinarians have been taught. So it's important for us to be able to educate ourselves and really understand the breakdown of why we believe what we believe and why dogs are carnivores. And with that being said, we can only do what we can afford. So if you do have to add those starches into your dog's fresh food, or maybe you do have to feed half of the day kibble, push it to at night, let them last all day long in energy balance, thriving, and it's a really good kind of carb hack that we like to do for Summit sometimes, and you guys can do for your dogs as well. Thank you guys for taking the time to listen. I hope you enjoyed. Again, as always, if you have any questions or maybe comments and insight, please comment below on our video. Follow our Instagram, summit underscore wellness. Like, comment, subscribe, don't forget. And again, thank you so much for all the feedback that we've been giving. We love to answer questions and we love to interact with you guys. All we want is to help your fur babies thrive like I've helped my dog thrive. He may seem low energy in these videos, but if you guys head over to Instagram and see him running around hiking and rolling, you'll see that he is thriving as well. The benefits have been astounding for him, and we really just want to help you guys learn and possibly make the change too. Thanks, guys.